Kartek. There you go. Okay. Wow, that's a big crowd. Probably the biggest so far. <sighs> okay. My name is Karthik and clicker. Yeah. My name is Karthik. I am an Android developer and, an, and a GDE. Uh, and this is Intro to Gemini. I'm not going to cover a lot of technical details. I leave that for the workshop. But uh, we're going to talk about functionality and maybe some Q&A depending on time remaining. Um, ooh. Two slides. I am a GD in Android, not a GD in AI. So I just know how to use AI. I do not know how to make AI. Just getting that clear. OK, let's start with this. What is generative AI? It's a branch of artificial intelligence that's all about creating content. It's all about um, you know, giving you new stuff rather than just identifying something or classifying something and giving you information about what you probably already know. So. Generative AI can give you music as an output. It can give you, or at least aims at giving you music, videos, and things like that. Um, an LLM is a neural network that models the distribution of text on which it is trained. In this example, um, it can take an input like it's raining cats and dogs. And then it provides, or it puts weights on what are the next possible words in that sentence, and picks the one which has the highest weight. So if you think about it, it is a very sophisticated autocomplete. Um, a model that is trained on poetry will give you a poetic answer. If a model is trained on code, your result will be code in nature. That's just how LLMs work. Um, the current modern LLMs are massive. They're huge. So much so that it, it, they contain a lot of data and they can do a lot of work which, for which you needed different AI or specific neural uh, networks earlier. Um, entity extraction, classification, summarization, just to name a few. You needed separate AI op models and separate AI interfaces to be able to use them. Uh, but with this, this era of LLM, everything is bundled into one. Um, the current generation of LLMs, they allow you to prototype really fast. You can uh, put a question in, and just you start getting a bunch of data out. And the current LLMs also allow you to you know, just generate some code so that you can start building a prototype. You don't have to start thinking about, oh, which framework should I use? Which particular language should I use? It generates code in a lot of languages, so you can pick your favorite. Um, the, because of their massive size, they have a get, good understanding of what humans call culture. So it can explain a joke to you very well. Or it can even generate ideas for a science fair, so it can be creative. Uh, the large language models have some emerging abilities. First one is the emerging abilities to perform tasks which are not present in smaller t uh, models. They are, you, you can also talk to them in, in a non-traditional manner. Which, which, what that means is, you, it, it, traditionally, you would have to write a program to be able to access an AI model and then you know, ask it very specific, give it very specific instructions. But now you can just ask it a question in English or any other language for that matter. You don't even have to explain it very well. It understands what you're trying to say. And then it gives you a very accurate answer as well. And because of its massive uh, data set, it can help you with a large number of problems. With Gemini, and with other LLMs as well, but in this case with Gemini, uh, we have multimodality at its core. And what does multimodality mean is uh, you, can, you can send it not just a text input, but you can mix input of different kinds and send it to Gemini as your prompt. So you can mix images, videos, text, and all of that help you or help the end user frame a better question. Now that we are in the Gemini era, welcome to it. We've got three levels of Gemini as AI, or Gemini models. Uh, one is called the Pro, which is the most common model that you'll see, the model that we'll be using in the workshop today, and the model that my examples are based off. We've got Ultra. I am not sure if Ultra is readily available yet. I don't think so, but it's 
far more superior in understanding the context and is based for uh, complex problem solving. And then there's Nano. Nano is, think of it as an embedded AI within an Android device and is only available through the Android AI core service on a limited number of devices to, as of today. The Gemini ecosystem itself is available for three different consumer points. For regular consumers, like you're searching, you're using Google Drive, uh, you're not part of any enterprise workspace, you've got Gemini here and there and some sort of plugin or some sort of side dashboard which just lets you use Gemini. If you're a developer, you've got Gemini API through the AI Studio that I'm gonna talk about and Vertex AI which will be used in the workshop today. And then for businesses and enterprises, you've got managed Gemini where Gemini directly integrates with your data, your enterprise, and helps you run your business better. Just to get started with Gemini API, and like I said, minimal code, actually no code will be involved in my presentation. It's just about understanding what Gemini is capable of, and then how do you use it on a interf web interface as a non-programmer. So aistudio.google.com is where you would want to go to get started. What it lets you do is generate API keys if you want to start using Gemini on your own code. But beyond that, you can actually start using prompts there, test your prompts. You can customize and fine tune models if you want, right on that interface. And then you can generate some starter code. If you're a developer for yourself, if you're not a developer, for somebody that might be helping you out. And AI Studio is free, which means you don't have to pay anything for that. So this is the general interface of how AI Studio looks. Um, you've got the Get API Key button up on the left. Uh, that's where you choose the model. So you've got uh, one point, Gemini 1.0 Pro, 1.5 Pro. All these models are available there as a dropdown. And then that's the prompt area. So you can see that there's some text and a few images all together in one, uh, one single prompt. And that's the multimodality part of it. Uh, finally, when you run a prompt, that get code button gets enabled, and it gives you an option to you know, generate this prompt and give you the starter code for it, and you can just put it on whatever language you like and start building further. At this point, you've got a REST API for Gemini API, and then a few packages and platforms have dedicated SDKs with uh, varying capacities of features. Vertex AI which will be touched upon again in workshop, is the managed Google Cloud solution for the same kind of API. Um, it's a paid service, but in return, Google promises you that that data will not be used to retrain Gemini. Whereas in Gemini AI Studio, because it's a free offering, the cost is that your data will be used to train Gemini further. Okay, some usage patterns, which I'm gonna brief over. Um, Basic prompting, code generation, search information synthesis and retrieval, function calling, um, image understanding, and tuning. These are all capabilities in Gemini model as of right now. Basic prompting. This is very much to do with prompt engineering. Uh, if you give this prompt to AI Studio, you will get a poem in response. It will be a lot longer. I've just truncated here. Then you can ask a tip about JavaScript. And if you give this prompt, you would get an, a response which is similar to this. However, there's a problem here. If you keep on giving the same prompt again and again, you will notice that you're getting the same results again and again. Like four or five attempts later, you will get the same result and then you won't have a lot of creativity or a varying degree of information coming out. So we have something called few short prompting, in which case you give the prompt with an example, you leave it hanging, and from there on, the model understands what it is generating, how it needs to be structured as an output. Um, and with this, if you give it a one, uh, if you give it a single uh, example, it's a one-shot uh, prompting. If you give three examples, it'll be three-shot prompting. So in general, we just call it few-shot prompting. Um, this also increases the likelihood of getting a unique result every time by a massive scale. It's not like it's gonna repeat in just four tries. Maybe thousandth try, you'll get the same result back. And then you can include as many examples as possible 
to get, make it even more unique in every run. Um, as an example over here, this is what Gemini Studio returned after that one shot prompt. Uh, it's not very clear, but it's giving me multiple tips about multiple features in JavaScript. So the idea here is you need to chain prompts, make a plan on, of how to execute those prompts, um, put as much context as possible in one single prompt, it's, which is the premise for few short prompting, and then you can play around with temperature settings and safety settings, and there are other settings which I don't personally understand, but if you're an AI engineer, you would, it would make sense to you. Okay, jumping to code generation, you can ask uh, Gemini Studio to generate some fake data for you. Like, just ask it, literally. You don't have to even program any of it. In this case, we're asking it to generate some countries, capital cities, and their continents, a list of it. Then you can generate an SQL query on top of it. Again, you are not programming. You're asking Gemini to create a program for you or generate some code for you. And because of the nature of the prompt, it understands that this SQL query has to be based on the previous data. It can even simulate execution of that query for you, which means it'll kind of run the SQL and give it to you. But it won't actually run it because it's not backed by any SQL engine. It's just a simulation of what could happen if you were running it. So you could get wrong results as well. Um, it's a smart pair programmer as well. For a moment, let's imagine that you don't know how to write Docker files, but you need a Docker file desperately. You can just ask Gemini to you know, generate a Docker file for you. It'll give you something to start on, and now you probably have a better understanding of what it means, what you need to do, what you need to tinker around with to get your work done. And last but not the least, it can help you generate unit tests. If you've been writing unit tests, you know how frustrating it is to you know, come up with ideas of what else can be tested in that particular function or that particular class. Um, as an example, this is the prompt I gave. Just generate some unit tests for me. And it's smart enough to understand that there are different parameters. Different parameters could have different types. And sending the wrong type could give an error. So it's a good starting point. I can expand on this. I don't have to you know, sit down and come up with some basic unit tests. OK, next up is search information synthesis and retrieval. Another powerful thing about LLMs is that you can give it some data, and it will take it as an absolute truth. Um, and this is where you bring your own data to Gemini, or LLM in this case. Uh, all LLMs, no matter which LLM it is, no matter how much you're paying for it, have a cutoff date, which means there is a knowledge gap between that cutoff date and today. If you're lucky, that cutoff date could be today, great, but statistically, that's really hard to happen. So you need to get your information to LLM to be able to solve your problems. You need to get some new facts to LLM. Um, like the slide says, LLMs are not fact engines. They're generative AI, which means it will hallucinate. It will give you uh, random answers or factually incorrect answers if it doesn't know the right answer. Now, the idea is we use the prompts context window in uh, Gemini's case to provide more data to it. We don't have to write the code uh, if you're using AI Studio. You just have to upload a file or upload an image like we did before. Um, just as a quick example, this is a document that I provided to uh, Gemini and ask a prompt based on this document. Question was, explain how deep sea life survives. And the prompt further says, please base your answer based on this document. And then it considers that as the truth, ignores everything it knows, and responds in that manner. But if I give it a different document, which actually, as we know, this is the fact, It'll give you an answer based on that document. Again, it's not relying on its own data. It is trusting your data. So it's pretty powerful that it'll just ignore its own information and trust your data, which makes it scary as well, because now you can just you know, spread misinformation. So you have to be careful with it. Um, a prompt's context window is limited by the number of tokens you can input. Uh, Gemini 1 Pro has 30k tokens. 1.5 Pro has 1 million tokens, and everything is token. Every input that you put in is a token, which means 
the more input that you give, the slower it'll become because it'll have to process each and every token. And token is what the cost is to run a prompt on an AI. Okay, next up is function calling. Now this is an interesting one because now you're telling Gemini to call a function on my environment and you're not passing data back to Gemini. So think of a server running on some node environment which is owned by your company or it's owned by you. And then you're running Gemini as an API on top of that, asking it questions. You can tell Gemini that I want to you know, run, I, I've, I've got this problem and I've got this tool to solve that problem. So just solve it for me. I don't want to do that complex stuff. So what it does is it asks, it tells your program that I've got this function that needs to be called. These are the parameters. Please execute and give me the answer back. Um, I'm not gonna display the code because it gets more complicated than it should be at this level. But the idea is there's a to and fro uh, movements very similar to how an acknowledgement happens in HTTPS. And then finally the result goes back to Gemini. So it has no idea of how it got the result. It just knows the result. And then it gets you the textual, textual response back. Next is image understanding. Um, so far we've focused on the textual capabilities. Now we'll get into some vision-based stuff. And I've got a few questions to ask. And um, this has happened in the past. People just start prompting the answer. Do we have swag? We have swag? Brilliant. So right, right answer gives you a swag. If you just blur out an answer, nobody gets anything. Uh, first question. What movie is this? Nobody gets an answer. Uh, nobody gets a swag. But yeah, the answer is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now, this is just two images, one of a chocolate and one of a factory. But Gemini knows human culture. Gemini understands how did a human probably guess this, and it guesses it. The next example will actually show its prompt, uh, its, its thinking process. In this case, raise hands, raise hands, raise hands. <laughs> Please don't do that. Yep, yeah, it's Home Alone. Um, and in this prompt, uh, we even asked, explain your reasoning. So it gives you an extra passage explaining what it thinks a human would have thought, why a house and that face, which Kevin makes in the movie, and then a Christmas tree makes it think it's Home Alone. And we know it's the right answer. Okay, next one. Please don't blur out the answer, otherwise nobody gets anything. It's a book. I saw that hand first. It's not quite place. Well, at least not as per my example. It could be quite place, I don't know. Yes. Yes, it is the secret garden, so she gets something. Brilliant. Um, we didn't ask. Gemini to explain why it thinks it's Secret Garden, so it didn't tell us, as simple as that. Next one, some of you will get it, some of you will be too excited that yes, I know, and some of you will be like, uh, what? Yes, that's 2001 Space Odyssey. Now, if you haven't seen the movie, you won't understand it, but if you have, there's monkeys in the start of the movie, there's a big black monolith, and then there's astronauts. Otherwise, if you just see this, this doesn't make sense. But Gemini knows because it understands human culture. End of questions. Um, it's not just about these descriptive images. It also understands rasterized text inside an image. So this is an image, and the text is actually pixel rasterized. It's not vector, uh, let's say that. And then the question also says, explain it step by step. So Gemini goes ahead and explains everything in a step-by-step -step manner. Does a solution for a three-variable uh, three linear equation easily. So images are just another token for Gemini's input. Again, you have to use it within the prompts window, but then images can be a question in themselves. Uh, it can be another context for your prompt, or it could be a query subject like we saw in the last example. Um, images can be used to condition your prompt better or to get some structured data extraction and save some time. 
And by what that I mean is if you give an image like this and ask it to generate a character sheet, you will get something out. And then if you play a lot of RPG games, that is useful for you because now you can quickly iterate through your character uh, building exercise. Next one is we've got this filled form, an image of it with handwritten text. And we just ask uh, Gemini to extract information out of it. In this example, we just ask it to extract information uh, with JSON. So it gives me a nice structure. But if you do a few short prompting here, give it an example of what JSON structure should look like, it'll give you result in that structure. So it's pretty powerful. It can save you a lot of manual uh, code typing time. OK, last part of this features thing is tuning. Now, so far we've been playing with the context and the prompt window, but tuning actually allows you to take a whole lot of data, take a base model, and train AI further on your data so it gets better with your data. It's available through AI Studio. It is available to program as well. Um, what you do is, in AI Studio, you go to the new tuned model, you create a structured prompt, or you e upload a sheet from uh, Google Sheets, which, has, which basically explains to Gemini that if this is the input, that has to be the output, and a bunch of examples. Now, in my experiments, I've used a data set with 20 such prompts, and, it, and using the default settings of training, it takes about 15 minutes to train, and then it becomes really, really powerful with my data, like, of course. Um, there are permissions that you have to configure for this. Um, they are not part of the SDK yet, but if you if you go through the AI Studio or Vertex AI, it's a lot easier to uh, manage. Um, but yeah, the idea is you can take amazing amount of data, train your AI overnight, have your fine-tuned model, which is only for you, and then build applications on top of it. As an example, an FAQ chatbot, if you've got like 100 FAQ questions, Train that chatbot and let people ask silly questions. You don't have to worry about answering them anymore. OK, enough about the features. Now, responsible AI. It is, it is important that you understand, as an AI developer or an AI user, you have a huge responsibility on making sure that you use the results in a correct manner. Because these are generative AIs and because you can mess around with the settings, it is possible that you get some harmful information, um, something culturally sensitive, something personally sensitive. But you need to understand that this is a generative AI. It's not a factual engine. So you have to take it with a grain of salt, no matter what. And then if you don't understand these settings, there are security settings like toxic content and whatnot, don't mess around with them. The defaults are going to give you the best possible uh, answer if you do not understand AI. If you do understand, then you obviously understand the res massive responsibility behind it. So yeah, feel free to play around with that. Um, yeah, reaching towards the end, that's where you get started, ai.google.dev. There's a Discord channel as well where you can join the Gemini API developers along with other people using Gemini API. Um, yeah, it's been fun. Thank you. And I can, I've got some time so I can take questions for the next three minutes or so. Um, now, I have just a doubt about how you count the um, tokens. For example, you gave us uh, one example when you make the Germany explain this uh, or give us your, uh, the reason of why you say this. Hmm. All the answer. Also, we have to uh, um, count tokens, or because. Hmm. Interesting question. I've never actually thought about if the output is also counted as a token. Um, maybe it is. I'll have to double check. But definitely, the amount of input that is going in in that particular prompt is a token. And then once this prompt is gone in, you've got the result back. It resets to zero. But for the answer, I will. I'll have to check. Most likely no, because it can blur out a lot of answer and then stop midway because out of token length. Uh, but I, I doubt it'll be included. I'll have to check. Thank you. Question here. 
Thanks, Karthik. Yep. Uh, quick question again on the tokens. So when you said the pricing is based on the number of tokens that you input and you said in 1 million tokens. So is it like over a period of year or the entire uh, usage or uh, yeah, does it get, mm. does it show you that, okay, how many tokens are pending in your account? So how does that work? Can you throw some light? No, I th Thanks. the token counting is based per prompt, but I'm not sure if the billing is based per prompt or per data usage. Uh, Kishan would be able to answer that better during the workshop because he's worked with Vertex AI, I haven't worked with Vertex AI. We have a question, okay, yeah. Yeah, so my question was on uh, image generation. Uh, does Gemini actually process the images? Because the once I used it to um, ask, like so I put a Figma uh, shade, a color shade on it, and I asked for its hex values, and I was told that it cannot yet process the images themselves. So if it's not processing, then how is it like answering those questions and like filling the forms itself? Um, it depends. Like, did you choose the vision model? Because if it's not the vision model, it won't be able to use it. So you've got regular Gemini Pro one and 1.5 both, and then there's like a tuned version of vision for them, and that's the only. Those are the only models which can process images or okay. uh, anything graphic for that matter. That could be an issue. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, just yeah, one um, For the paid versus the free one, you mentioned that your data doesn't get added to the LLM as part of the paid one. Mm -hmm. Does that include the prompts that you, as in your prompts are not added to the model or any other model? Yeah, all the interaction that you're having with Gemini at that time, the Gemini model, if you're using the paid version, uh, they do not, then, It'll get stored somewhere, obviously, but it won't be reused to train Gemini further. Whereas in AI Studio, everything, all the interactions, all the chat history, everything can be used to further train it. Any other? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I have a user case. Uh, our our company have a support website, cost lots of support document. Uh, can I just ask uh, Gemini to base? Uh, give answer based on the document, all the document in my support website instead of go to everywhere. Can, yep. can you do it? Yeah, so that's an excellent use case and uh, kind of supports my example as well where you can, uh, if the document is legible, let's say it's a PDF and it can easily, you can easily understand the text in it. As long as those documents fit the prompt window, you can provide them to Gemini and ask it to answer based on that. However, if you want to automate the, uh, the support part of it based on those documents, a better approach would be to use those documents um, to fine train the model better and then use the new trained model to answer questions. So can I, can I just, let's say, give the, uh, give the domain of my support website and let Gemini to get all the documents from that domain and, and, um, and, and do the training or whether give answer, can you do it? It's not, it's not based on one document. It's multiple document. Yeah, so you will have to do some engineering there at a code level. You can't just provide a domain and give it. Um, okay, Gishan wants to can answer I, that. Can I add something onto that? Uh, so your particular use case, I'm, I'm at the back. <laughs> so your particular use case looks like you, you have one or multiple documents and then you want it to be processed by uh, LLM, right? Yeah. So from what I see, there would be at least two ways of doing it. One would be with the Gemini Pro 1.5 that has a million tokens of context and that equates to one hour of video and five hours of audio or like an insane number of words. That's one way. The other way you could do it is with RAG. So you kind of change that document into vector, put it into a vector database and the LLM would be grounded from there. Which one is better, I don't know. I have tried both of them, I think the RAG method is a bit better from what I've tried because what we did was we did something similar. We put all of our help docs uh, into a vector database and then made a chatbot out of it and it would reply things like, how do I change my password? And then it would only reply from our uh, help, help desk docs that were on, on Zendesk. So those would be the two ways to do it uh, from my point of view. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, all good, thank you. I actually don't know much about RAG so that's a helpful answer. Um, again, that's it for questions. I'm running out of time. But um, 
If you want to try out a few examples, you can scan that QR code, go to my GitHub, you'll find a few repositories where I have implemented things and also left some things blank. So if you want to just try it out later. But otherwise, Gishan over here will be doing a workshop where you'll be dealing with Vertex AI. Um, and I'll just hand it over to Gishan now. Yeah. No? There's a break? OK, there's a break. So Kunal's going to take over. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Karthik. That was amazing. We'll